Hey, what's going on, guys? Today we're going to be reviewing all 32 teams of the NFL Draft. We're going to be giving them a ranking, and we're going to be giving them a grade. Let's get right into it. First on the list is the New England Patriots. I thought that they overdrafted heavily on their first two picks in Cole Strange and Tyquan Thornton. I didn't think that Tyquan Thornton was a complete receiver to be not enough to be going in the second round, even though he did ran a, run a 4-2-7. And Cole Strange in the first round, probably the worst first-round pick. I thought he, he had a chance to go in the third round, even though I do like him as a center. They thought he did good at the Senior Bowl as well. But then they drafted like Billy Zape as a quarterback in the fourth round. It did not need a quarterback. And the rest of their picks were not guys that I was very high on. So they're going to be getting a D and they're last on my list. The Chicago Bears outright refused to pick their biggest need, which was offense, with their first two picks. Even though they did get Kyler Gordon and Jaquan Brisker, who I think are both good players in the secondary, I thought this was a draft where you needed to really help Justin Fields. And then when they did get receiver, they drafted Venus Jones, who I was not very high on. I thought he was not a good route runner at all. And then they had so many low picks, which I don't think are going to become immediate impact players. So I'm going to give them a 31. This was a bad draft. They really didn't help, Zach, uh, they didn't really help Justin Fields a lot. So they're getting a C-. minus. Seems like the Rams never have any draft picks ever. I mean, last year they had three. This year they had more, but they had no first round pick, no second round pick yet again. And with their picks, I didn't really think they did a lot with them other than uh, my favorite pick being Darion Kendrick, who I'm higher on than a lot of other people. Had some issues in college, uh, had some issue history there. I tra I got kicked out of Clemson. And I think that Logan Bruss was an all right pick if not an overreach in the third round so i'm gonna give them a 30 they didn't have a first and second round pick and i'm gonna give them a c minus i was not a fan at all of the cowboys draft pick they ended up getting tyler smith in the first round who i thought was a overdraft even though he is known as a mauler he commits way too many penalties and i thought that sam williams was a horrible pick in the second round way overdrafted for him uh and then the rest of their guys, I mean, I, I think that Jalen Tolbert and Jake Ferguson were their best picks, but they, they're they not anything special. Their third, round, their third and fourth round picks, even though I think that Jalen Tolbert was their best. And they did not get defensive end, which I thought was their biggest need. And I thought they needed also linebacker. They ended up getting Damian Clark in the fifth round, which I thought was decent value. But otherwise, they're getting a C for me. The Dolphins traded for Tyree Kill. Over the offseason, so that's why they don't have many picks. Uh, they gave up a first and a second. But for the pick that I really liked uh, for them was Shannon Tindall. Now, I uh, thought that was where he was going to go. But for the rest of the picks, I mean, uh, they didn't get much value other than Shannon Tindall, in my opinion. But they did get Tyreek Hill, so I'm going to give them a C. The 49ers draft, uh, their, their whole draft picks is really helped by Drake Jackson, which I thought was a good pick or a good value pick for the late second round. Other than that, they drafted to, uh, they drafted Davis Price, who I thought was a way overdraft in the third round. Not only did they not need a running back at all, they got they ended up getting one in the third round. Also, they, this they could have made, moved Debo Samuel as well to, to get into the first round at 10, for example, the Jets. But otherwise, their draft is kind of unimpressive. Other than Drake, uh, and, but Drake Jackson kind of does save this, so I'm going to give them a C+. Plus. Cardinals are coming in at 26 for me, and I'm going to give them a C plus. I think that Trey McBride was a weird pick because they did they didn't really didn't need tight end. They re-signed Zach Ertz, uh, but I think that McBride was the best tight end. And I feel like this draft was 100% saved by Cam Thomas and Maji Sanders, both good value picks uh, in the third round. And they also got Hollywood Brown. Which uh, they they, tra they traded a, f a first round pick for him, which I thought was a weird. I think that was way overvalued for Hollywood Brown, who is eventually who just uh, who's going to be a Christian Kirk replacement. But I think he's going to do well in that offense. So uh, I'm going to give them a C plus for their draft pick. It's really saved by Cameron Thomas and Maji Sanders, but I thought the rest of the draft picks were just. The Commanders are at 25, and I like the Jahan Dotson, I, even though I thought this was kind of an overdraft. Uh, at tw at 16, I knew that receivers were going to really high, and he's probably the best hands in the draft at receiver. But then the rest of their picks were a little bit weird. Sam Howell, 
in the fifth round. Uh, I don't know what he's going to do there. Cole Turner was an interesting pick in the fifth round as well. Brian Robinson Jr., uh, just a bowling back probably. Paradis Mathis, I think, was the probably the best value pick for them. But other than that, they kind of had an average-ish draft uh, in a year where they kind of needed to get better. So they're probably gonna, they might even finish last in the uh, NFC East now. So I'm going to give them a B minus. The Raiders draft, uh, the draft picks were heavily implicated by the the uh, the Devontae Adams trade, traded a first and a second for him. But with the picks they got, I thought they they had some decent value. D uh, D Dylan Parham was, uh, I thought was a good pick in the third round. Zayer, Zamir White was their best pick. At running back, and I didn't think they needed running back because they still have Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drake. Other than that, they didn't have that many picks, and they had a lot in day three. Devonta Adams does implicate, so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna give them a B minus. I thought that maybe be, going to the Super Bowl kind of hurt their draft spots, uh, and I also didn't think they drafted all that well either. The Cincinnati Bengals picked two safety, or they picked they ended up picking three safeties. In the the draft, two first and the first two of them were safeties: Dax Hill and then Taylon Britt. I thought that he Taylon Britt was a overdraft in the second round, and I like the Daxton Hill pick a lot. But I, they now have what five safeties now? They already have Von Bell. They already have yeah. They they already have already too many safeties in that list. And then I, I like the Zachary Carter pick in the third round. Maybe a little bit of an overdraft, but. The draft, the winning the Super Bowl kind of, or going to the Super Bowl, hurt them a little bit because they got a lot of low picks. But I'm gonna give them a B minus. It's really, really, really hard to think that the Jaguars are so low on my list. But I, I've already said enough about Trayvon Walker. I, even though he is a freak athlete and he has good run blocking or run defending ability, he has he had an eight percent pressure rate in college, which is very low. And freak athletes that have low pressure rates in college. Uh, do not really translate well to the NFL. My example is always Taco Charlton. But I think that Devin Lloyd kind of saves it. I like Devin Lloyd. I knew that he was going to go around this area. And this also meets a need because you got rid of Miles Jack. And I thought that the Luke Fortner pick was all right. Maybe a little bit high because I thought this is where Cole Strange was going to go. But they also then drafted Chad Muma. And I like Chad Muma. I like thought that he was going to go maybe early or, or uh, late second round early third round, but they already had Foyce out of Luicon. So they're basically going to have to run three linebacker sets every time if they want to make up for that. And then the rest of their draft pick was whatever picks. Scoop Connor was whatever. Anyways, uh, I was, I'm just not that high on this draft. I'm going to have to give it a B or a B minus, depending on how much you value Trayvon Walker. Uh, I have the Cleveland Browns at 21. Due to the fact that their draft was hit by Sean Watson, they gave up a lot for him. Three first-round picks. So they're going to be lower on my boards for the next three uh, years. But I really like the value that they got. Dave Bell was a good pick in the third round. Perrion Winfrey was probably the steal of the fourth round. I mean, I thought he was way too talented to be in the fourth round. But uh, they also drafted Cade York in the fourth round, which... Getting a fourth round kick is a little high, um, but anyways, I thought they had decent value for the guys that they picked. But it is, uh, but the draft is implicated by the Sean Watson, so um, we'd give them a B. Denver is gonna fall to twenty. Now, I love the Nick Benito pick. I thought that he was very good out of college. He had a twenty-two percent, uh, like an eighteen to twenty percent pressure rate at Oklahoma. Thought this was a very good pick at the end of the second round. I like the Greg Dolch pick. They kind of needed tight end because they gave up um, Nick or uh, Noah Fant in the the Russell Wilson trade, which also implicates they didn't have a first round pick. But I thought that Daniel Tur Tur Turner Yell was a weird, weird, weird pick in the fifth round. I uh, did not even think he was going to be drafted. I thought he was going to be undrafted. And they also didn't address their biggest two needs, which were interior linebacker and out and uh, offensive tackle. So. I thought they had. A, I thought they did good with their first two picks, but other than that, I thought they had an average draft. Gonna give it a B.
Tampa Bay is going to 19. Now, I l- I really like the Logan Hall pick. thought that he was probably one of the best interior defensive tackle uh, for pass rushing. This is a year Dominic and Sue replacement. And I thought that uh, the Luke Gadek pick was all right as your probably replacement to Donovan Smith at uh, left tackle, possibly. And then they drafted a punter in the fourth round, which I don't know about that. But my favorite pick, my favorite, favorite pick of the fifth round was Ian McCollin going to a great situation in the Bucks where they already have good cornerbacks and they needed cornerback depth. And this is great value in Zion McCollin, who I thought was a top 100 player. I thought he was the best FCS player other than Cole Strange in this draft. but So I am going to give them a B just because they didn't have too many picks. But it, but Logan Hall and Zion McCollum really, really do, do make up this draft. Now, I did have the Vikings as one of my losers of the draft. But looking more at it, I thought they got, looking at it at a new perspective, new day, I thought they got way better. Even though I do think that the Lewisine pick came off of the back of the Lions coming up. And trading a third round pick essentially for Jameson Williams. I thought I think that Lewis Seen was a really good player. I thought they had was it, I thought it was great value for Andre Booth, who I thought was gonna go at 32. Uh do do not I still don't like the uh, awesome uh, Brian Awesome pick at the top of the third round. But looking at it, this is not this was not a bad pick. This was not that bad of a draft pick, even though I think that Eddie Ingram was a horrible pick in the second round. I thought he was probably the worst second round pick. But I'm I'm looking a little higher in this draft, and I'm going to give them a B or a B plus, uh, falling them at 18. The Saints are coming in at 17. Now Chris Olave and Trevor Penning, I thought were good picks. Trevor Penning's really raw though, coming out of Northern Iowa, but he's very much of a mauler and a aggressive, very extremely aggressive player. Uh, my comparison is a little bit of a weird one, but it's Ryan Jensen if you're on offensive tackle. And then his offensive tackle comp, uh, and the ESPN has him at Nate Solder, and I kind of agree. As a pass blocker, he's v- he's very raw. And Chris Olave I thought was an overdraft at 11, but I knew that, I knew, I knew, I knew that he was going to go really high. Blew up, the, uh, blew up the combine. Great route running as well. But then the rest of the draft, um, not very impactful. I thought that Elante Taylor was... Bit of very, very, very questionable pick in the second round. So I'm going to move them at 17, and I'm going to have them at a B plus. I thought that the Chargers had a very average draft pick all over the board. I like the, I like the Zion Johnson pick, but I wish they did take offensive tackle, and I wish they also took tight end. They got JT Woods in the third round, which I thought was good. They got Isaiah Spiller, who I'm... V- I'm I'm so 50-50 on Isaiah Spiller. I mean, he's he's extremely he's like kind of slow with a four like four six forty time, but in game he is a good running back. But other than that, kind of just had a very average draft. But I like Zion Johnson, and I think that boosts him up to a B plus. I was I was I was so low on the Packers in the first round. I thought that Quay Walker was a massive overdraft, and I thought that Deontay Wyatt was. A really good pick, but I was waiting for them to take receiver. But in the second round, they did. They got they went ahead and got Christian Watson. I thought this was a great pick for Aaron Rodgers. And then they also went out and got Sean Ryman, or Sean Ryan, excuse me, which was their second biggest need. I like that pick. And then they also got Romeo Dubs, who is a great route runner and also has great size in 6'2", 210. So I thought they made up for it a lot with their with the uh, the day two and day three picks. I lo- love the Christian Watson pick. I love the Romeo Dubs pick. And I love the Sean Ryan pick. And that also helps the the uh, Deontay Wyatt pick. This also helps rationalize the Deontay Wyatt pick. Now, I think that Quay Walker does hurt this draft. So I am going to give it a B plus, And I'm going to put them uh, 15 as well. Carolina Panthers are up next. And they, did, and they lost their second round pick. This was the Sam Darnold pick. Or the Sam Darnold trade. But I liked Ikemaquan at six. This was great value for him. I was a lot higher on. Oh, I thought Ikemaquan was my second best player. Loved him at six. They ended up getting Matt Corral in the third round, which I thought was that was all right. Uh, they also got Cade Mize, who I liked in the sixth round. But they didn't have a lot of picks. Gave up two of them for the Sam Darnold trade. 
But for the value they got, they had a good draft, especially with Aiken McQuan, who really carries this. So I'm going to give them a B plus. Buffalo at 13. I'm going to give them a B plus. I like the Kyer Alon pick a lot. Thought they needed cornerback, especially like with trade uh, with trade Avius White gone, or especially when he went out in the middle of the season, they really struggled, and especially we saw it against in the divisional round versus the Chiefs. You can't give up a touchdown or you can't give up a field goal in 13 seconds. So cornerback was their 100% biggest need. I like James Cook. I like James Cook in the second round. I thought it was I was higher on him than a lot of the people. Thought he, I knew, uh, thought he was my third running back. ESPN is lower on him than I am. Uh, the brother of... Oh, no. No, never mind. I'm thinking of the wrong guy. Uh, other than that, they had a lot of... They had just a lot of day... Day, um, day three picks. But they, had, they did good with their first two picks. Especially in Kyrie Elam. So I'm going to give them a B+. Plus. Uh, I'm going to have the Colts at 12. I thought they did really well in the mi- their middle picks, uh, highlighted by Alec Pierce, Jalen Woods, and Bernard Raymond. I thought those were all three really good picks in day two. I thought they were one of the winners of day two especially. So I am going to give them a B+. Plus. I kind of keep it a little short just because they didn't have too many notable picks. They didn't have a first round. That was the Carson Wentz, so it kind of hurts it a little bit. But I really liked what they came out with, especially in day um, day two. I have the Falcons at eight. And I'm torn between having the Texans above them. Just because I think that their draft. I have the Atlanta Falcons at eight. I like their draft a lot. I think that Drake, L- Drake London was a good pick at eight, even though I think that Garrett Wilson was a better player. But this does fit their biggest need, in my opinion, at um, at receiver. Arnold at, at um, Epichetti was a good, really good pick in the top of the second round. Troy Anderson, I thought, was a bit of an overdraft at 26 when there were better linebackers on the board. Desmond Ritter, even though even though I'm not as high as him as guys like Malik Willis was on the board, I still think that was good value in the third round. And then they got Tyson, uh, Tyler Aguilar, who I'm way higher on. And then the rest of the draft picks, they got some good value on. But Drake London and, and Epichetti, Troy, uh, Epichetti and London do carry this. I am torn on having them above the Texans. Um, but I'm going to give them, regardless, I'm going to give them probably a B plus to an A minus. So the Steelers are at 11 for me. Now, they're a borderline top 10 team because I really liked their picks in the middle rounds. George Pickens, great value, great value at 20. DeMarvin Leal, I thought was a good pick as well. Calvin Austin in the Steelers system is going to be really good. Connor Hayward, a fullback. <laughs> fullback gets drafted. And other, uh, but the biggest question mark for me about this really hurts it was they draft two quarterbacks. Now, I know that the Chris Otakom doesn't really matter, but they have Mitch Trubisky, and they drafted Kenny Pickett, and he was not my first quarterback. Other than Malik Willis was my first quarterback. But he stays in Pittsburgh. He goes to a system that's going to fit him. And likely in year two, year three, he's going to be the starter. And I think that he has probably the best chance to succeed in Pittsburgh. So I'm going to give this an A-. minus. Tennessee Titans come in at nine. Now, this is up impacted by A.J. Brown. But they basically got A.J. Brown in Traylon Burks, who was the player comp for ESPN. My player comp was Debo Samuel, a little bit of an aggressive pick. But then they ended up getting Roger McCreary in the second round, which I thought was great value. They got uh, Nicholas Pietrier, who I thought was an arguable second round pick. And then the big the big honka of this one was Malik Willis. Malik Willis was my number one quarterback. He was in the top 25, I'm pretty sure. And this was such an excellent pick. He's going to sit under Ryan Tannehill. But I think he could be the definite future of the Tennessee Titans. Derrick Henry is going to help him a lot. I do think he's still really raw. But I really, really like Malik Willis' pick. This elevates this class uh, arguably above the Steelers. They ended up getting Hassan Haskins, who I li- really liked out of Michigan as well. So uh, I like the draft pick. It is hurt a little bit by A.J. Brown. Uh, but I am going to have them at 9, giving them, giving them an A-. minus. 
Houston really brought me back in after day two and day three. I thought that Derek Stingley pick was a bit questionable and a risky pick due to his injury history. And I thought that Sauce Gardner was CB1. And Kenyon Green, I also thought that uh, Zion Johnson was better than Kenyon Green due to versatility and his ability at almost every position. But then they, dra they brought me back with Jalen Petrie, and they brought me back with John Mechie, and they brought me back with Christian Harris and Damian Pierce. I thought they did, they did excellent with the rest of their picks. And this all these those also elevate Derek Stingley and Kenyon Green. So this is a top 10 class for me. I'm going to give this a A minus. Really like, really, really like how they came out of day two and then the beginning of day three. The Seahawks are coming in at the eighth place. Now, I'm having them at an A minus just because I like the Charles Cross pick. This does come off the back of Russell Wilson, but I think that Charles Cross was one of the better, was the best pass blocking offensive tackle compared to Ikemukwano and arguably Evan Neal. And then I really like the Boya Mafe pick. This meets probably their, they met their biggest and second biggest need in their first two picks, which I always love. But this is hurt also by Kenneth Walker. They just didn't need running back. They had Rashad Penny coming off of his best year as a pro. They also still have Chris Carson who's coming off of injury. I thought that the Kobe Bryant pick was an interesting pick. But and then they also drafted Tarek Wooden, who I thought was way better than Kobe Bryant. Uh, so interesting pick there. They also drafted Abraham Lucas. They got really good value on a lot of their guys, including Bo Melton, who was very good at the combine and the senior bowl out of Rutgers. thought they got great value on almost all of their picks, especially one, especially those in day three and day two, including Charles Cross. I'm going to give them an A minus. I do like the draft pick, the draft a lot. Next, we're going to have the Giants. Now, I, I wish that their next picks, other than the first round, I wish that their day two and day three picks were better. Just Kayvon Thibodeau and Evan Neal were such awesome picks. Two top five players getting them was awesome. But Wendell Robinson was a question mark because they didn't really, they did, just didn't need him. They drafted him in the second round when they already have Kadarius Tony, who plays just exactly like Wendell Robinson. Uh, Josh, Joshua Exuda was a way overdraft in the third round. C uh, Cordell Flott was all right value in the third round, but I don't think they needed cornerback unless, you, unless you're guaranteed to replace James Bradbury. J uh, Dane Belton thought was a way overdraft in the fourth round. So I just wish that their day two and day three picks were better. I thought that a lot of Better players were on the board, especially, especially Wendell Robinson. If you want a receiver, there are way better receivers on the board. So I am going to have to deduct them, but I'm still giving them an A because their first round picks matter the most. And I thought that they ended up getting two top five players. Coming in at five, I have the Detroit Lions. Really liked Aiden Hutchinson. Thought that he was the best player in the class and he f went at two because of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And they also got Jameson Williams who I really liked at thir at uh, 12, traded up basically nothing for him f with the Vikings. Zach Pas uh, next With the next pick, they got Zach Pascal, who I thought was good value at in the second round. I thought that Kirby Joseph was also another good pick. They met all their biggest, they really met all their biggest needs, and I thought that they should not have taken quarterback. Maybe they could have taken a risk with Malik Willis in the third round, but I thought that they got really good value, especially in their first four picks so i'm going to be giving them an a the rich keep getting richer essentially uh with the kansas city chiefs they came out of this draft so they, they had such a good draft pick i mean trent mcduffie was great value at 21 george call off this espn's a lot lower on him but i'm i thought that he was going to be a first round pick great value at 30 sky Moore does kind of what tyree kill does as he's really good deep threat, uh, deep threat with good route running, slippery guy. They also got Brian Cook. Oh, Brian Cook was the qu biggest question mark of this draft. Kind of hurts him a little, but Leo Chanel brings it all the way back. Loved him in the third, in the really low in the third round. I think he was picked in the hundredths. And then, uh, excuse me, Darren Kennard 
was good value. It was really good value, I thought, in the fifth round. He is tackle and guard flexibility. And then they their draft their draft pick was really good. The rich keep getting richer essentially, even though they did lose Tyreek Hill, which does hurt this draft. And I am I am beginning that. Uh, but they got Sky Moore. They got Sky Moore, who thought was a decent replacement, and they really got better on defense, especially with McDuffie, Karloftis, and Leo Chanel. So I'm gonna give them an A. The Philadelphia Eagles come in at three for me. Now, this is helped tremendously by AJ Brown. They gave up the 18th pick and a third round pick for an arguable top 10 receiver in the league who has had so good of production in the last couple of years. This is really going to help Jalen Hurts take a step in year three. And then at 13, they ended up getting Jordan Davis, who was my best run defender in the draft, best interior defensive tackle. Now he is going to play only two downs, but he is gonna, probably going to be an ex excellent value. Cameron Jurgens thought he was the second best center in this draft. Uh, I think people call him Beef Jurgens. Is his nickname? That's your uh, Kelsey replacement. That's your Jason Kelsey replacement. And they also, on top of it, got Nicobe Dean, who I thought was uh, the second best linebacker. Now he does have injury concerns. He tore his pec, but reportedly he is going to come back. Uh, he is going to be in during the season, and he even though he is undersized, he is going to be so fast. Uh, sideline. He's a sideline to sideline guy. Really like the draft pick AJ Brown. Was excellent value uh, was an excellent trade, so I'm going to give them an A. Now, I have two, I have two uh, number one teams, and I have them tied because I just cannot pick which one can, is better. Baltimore, they got Kyle Hamilton. Uh, people call it a generational safety, but I'm a little bit lower on him. I don't think he can be a great single high defender. I think he's way better in the box. But the the Ravens already have that settled with Marcus with Marcus Williams. They don't need Kyle Hamilton to play that role. Tyler Lindebaum, excellent addition at center. Their offensive line has been a lot weaker since Marshall Yonda left uh, to retirement. They got David Ajabo in the second round. What thought was great value because he was an arguable first rounder before he tore his Achilles at his pro day. Travis Jones was excellent value. I'm so high on him. And they got him in the third round. Man. And then they also, on top of it, they got Daniel Fa'alele, who I think is really good potential. And they got him in the fourth round. Man. And then also, like, they did get a punter in the fourth round. A lot of special teamers went in the fourth round, especially. And then they got Isaiah Likely in the fourth round as well. Great value. They got great value all around. Man, they, they they had an A-plus draft. Moving on to the next one, also had an A-plus draft. The New York Jets are also tied for the best draft, uh, the dra best draft class of the entire draft. I mean, they got Sauce Gardner. They faced Harry Kill and Stephon Diggs twice a year. You needed cornerback. Uh, you, you, you. And Sauce Gardner at 6'3", 190, is the closest thing to Antonio Cromartie that I've really seen. Great size, great length can play all, like, he can play man, he can play zone, press man, press bail, he can play all that. Garrett Wilson at 10, best receiver in the draft for me. They got him at 10. Drake London went ahead of him. Love this value at 10. This really helps out Zach Wilson uh, improve in his second year. I think the Jets really did need receiver because they did not address him in free agency. And then they got Jermaine Johnson, who was the steal of the draft, in my opinion, other than Kobe Dean, who went to the Eagles. Um... I mean, Jimmy Johnson. I thought was the. I thought he was going to be the pick at ten if Garrett Wilson went to the Falcons at eight. Uh, even though he is twenty three, and uh, has a little bit of concern about his intelligence, I think this was awesome, awesome, awesome value at twenty sixth. Then you got Brees Hall, the best running back in the class. The, the Jets now have three best at their positions, and Brees Hall creates a one two punch with Michael Carter. Uh, also has three four three nine speed, great pick there. You get Jeremy Rucker, who was a longtime Jet fan, including with his father from Long Island, six six two fifty. Even though tight end wasn't a need, um, the Jets add they keep on adding more on offense. This gives Zach Wilson no excuses for year two and year three. Also got so much talent. He's such a great he's such a great blocking tight end. He can all he he has excellent hands as well. He can also like create good separation at the tight end, and then you get Max Mitchell, swing tackle, 
Michael Clemens, even though he does have issues with, um, he, even though he has off the field issues and injury issues coming off of 25, definitely has some good edge talent. I really like how the Jets dra uh, draft this, and I'm going to have them tied at first with the Ravens because the Ravens just got so many, so many, so many great value picks. Uh, but that is going to cl conclude the video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts about each of your teams. Let me know your favorite pick. And more videos coming soon. Thank you guys for watching.